What's up, YouTube? We're in another video. We're doing another video. We're doing real talk, but this time we have Marcus Patterson, everybody. <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> no, I usually say I usually say um like how are you, but like it'd kind of be weird because like me and Marcus literally talk every day. So it I'm gonna do a story time of how me and Marcus became friends. Because not much people know. <laughs> not much people know. Um, they're, they're, me and Marcus go way back. We have a long, long story. Me and Marcus, me and Marcus Patterson, we met in the Galo class of Star Magic. It was just the Galo class. And uh, the Galo class kind of went, medyo matagal na yun eh. Medyo nasa gitna na kami ng semester na yun. Tapos biglang pumasok lang si Marcus. Na parang... Nabigla lang kami kasi hindi niya namin kilala to. Tapos sobrang puti niya. Alam lang na, yun ang alam na niya. Alam namin. Tapos he was really good at Tagalog already. That's the thing. We were all confused because he was really white. He was just that random white guy that just joined the class. Pero napagaling niya mag Tagalog. Kaya na, na ano kami. We were so confused who he really was. We didn't know who he was. Then he asked us to chill out. We became closer. Then me and Darren became close to him after I stopped chill out. And then you go, and then something happened. <laughs> something happened. May nagyari sa amin. So mga hindi na alam. Actually, a lot of people already know about this. But there was some. I'm not gonna name drop because there's no point. Let's not put that person's name in this. Um, but there was a certain person that Marcus decided to to go to Campe. <laughs> Associate with emotionally. <laughs> there you go. That's another good way to put it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Marcus decided to side with that person while um, that person started to detach from me and Darren uh, all of a sudden. But luckily, here we are today. Me and Marcus are back being friends. And the one reason why we are friends is because he said sorry and the person that should have said sorry he didn't say anything marcus is the only one that really and marcus didn't even need to say sorry he didn't really do much he just was emotionally attached let's just say that <laughs> i mean it wasn't really come on marcus it wasn't your fault it wasn't your fault we me and me and hey, that. hey 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 uh -huh. it was it was nobody else's fault than mine man it, I, I chose to be emotionally attached. All right, I chose that. I chose that. And, and like, there th there are situations when you have to realize, like, that I, when when you're so in lust, not in love, in lust with someone or something, that you 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 disregard all all your friends and all your family's feelings about it, you know. And it, this was one of those moments, and I realized that. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna moments. throw. I'm, <laughs> it was one of those moments that I'm, I'm not gonna throw away what I have good friendship good family all that just because of this so uh yeah I apologize because I needed to you can't say I didn't have to because I needed to because it was my fault entirely it was they were my choices and they were my mistakes you know no well for for me for me para sa amin naman ni Darren, we never really blamed it on you because because in the first place, you had all the freedom you wanted to do whatever you wanted with that person. But that person was the one that was turning you the other way from us. We didn't blame it on you because, bro, I know, alam, alam naman namin, when you're in love, bro, you do things that you don't expect yourself to do. It's normal. It, it's, it's human. So we never really wanted to blame it on you because we saw what that person was doing. So... That's why when you said sorry, it was just like, oh, it was refreshing. It was just like, oh, he said sorry and the other person nah, didn't. No, but like, <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying, but like the fact that like, you know, me being the older guy, you know, me, me sh taking the responsibility, like I, I, I should have like, I should have known like when to just, you know, when to just be like, yo, this is it. Like you're hurting a lot of people that you shouldn't be hurt. Like, ang dami nang nadadama yeh. Sa kalagohan natin. So parang, dun pa lang dapat sanabi ko na na parang tigilan na natin to. Pero wala eh. My, my brain, uh, I don't know. You were young. I, it's my fault. It's my fault. I was you young. young. You were young. You were I young. say that. I, was, I say that. I'm 22 now, right? I'm 22. But back then I was, what, 19? Wow. Wow. <laughs> that was so long ago. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ganda. Um, so you know already that this the, the, my segment is called Real Talk. So I like to get yeah. in depth with my the person I'm interviewing, which is now Marcus Patterson. I can't believe we're getting in depth out of it. Kami pa talaga nagiging garito, ah. Like we're not deep enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. I um so I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this if it's okay with you. I mean you talk about it on the stream sometimes. So um you went through something in your life. This was when uh, we weren't close. I I saw it on the news. Let's just say that. Um you went through something in your life which was what happened with you and the bike. Um of course that was hard. Even just seeing it even though we weren't close it was just like damn that really happened to him. So it really it, it kind of hurt. It kind of hurt, man, seeing you like that. But for those who have gone through stuff like that, and like, you know, there's a lot of motorcycle crashes, especially in the Philippines, because everyone has a motorcycle apparently, and a lot of people don't really know how to ride. How did you learn to bounce back from that? Um, bounce back. Well, the thing is, like, people are people always tell me about like, damn, you had an accident, you crash your you crash your bike and stuff like that. Like, I don't see it like that. Like it. Yeah, physically I crashed my bike. I, I I put myself in a situation where I broke my leg and I shattered it. I, I smashed it into the point where it could have been jello. It was jello. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was a it was a time in my life that was so dark that I was when I woke up in the hospital with a broken leg and a shattered kneecap, I woke up and I was like, God damn, I'm still alive. <laughs> Like it, it was that it was that dark of a time in my life where I was just like, you know, I, I've had enough, man. I, I can't do it. Like, I, first of all, like, I, I I say a lot about it. I don't, I don't I never really get into depth about it, but like, depression is not something to mess with. I like, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. I'm only twenty I'm only twenty two years old, and like, there's a lot of people that are dealing with it right now. And um, before that, before I experienced it myself, I thought it was just like yeah, a psychological thing that people could just like, you know, walk it off or get over it easily. It's just, it's not it's not it's 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 something that gets a hold of every like your everyday life, your every moment. When you wake up in the morning, it's in the back of your mind. When you eat your food for lunch for dinner, it's in the back of your mind. When you have mm-hmm. a shower, it's it's, it's there. Mm-hmm. It's it's your shadow. It, it becomes a shadow of your shadow, and you can't get over it until you face it. And that was my mistake. I, 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 I couldn't face it. I was, I was, I was in a dark hole for a long time because of the, you know, the situation we discussed earlier because of that person, <laughs> and, you know, her, her family were, you know, that was, I'm, I'm not going to drop names, but basically, you know, that person's family was calling me every day, um, on Viber leaving messages. And th- these were her parents. Okay. Like, that person's parents were leaving me messages and calling me every day, letting me know how much of a, a low life I was, letting me know a, a, a degenerate I was. And like, from a, from a, I, I, my age was 19, right? So like, I was just yeah, trying so to get, like you were get, trying to get, get somewhere, that. like, you know, like, trying to get out of it, right? Like, despite, I know, I know, I know I made mistakes, like, coming from now, but back then I didn't. I thought I was just I was just trying to be I was just trying to be you know happy and you know like at that time she made me happy. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not taking anything away from that. Like this person, yeah, we we had a great time together. Um, yeah, yeah. We made mistakes and like there, there, there's no way to blame just her. We both did. If it was if it was anyone's fault, it was mine because I I was I was the guy I was the guy, obviously, and um I I was the guy that was older. So I should have known what I was. I should know what we were doing. I should have known the, who we were hurting at the time. But she was the reason why I crashed. She was the reason why I wanted to drive my motorcycle at excessive Wait, speed. Wait, so at high. I never asked you this. This was intentional. It was intentional. Yeah. Whoa. Wait. So Holy crap! I've never said that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Are you allowed to say that on the okay. on the video? I mean, if not now, then when? You know, I mean, so, okay, so let me get this straight. So because of that person, you, cause I never really understood the story because the way I heard it was through the news. And then I hear from someone else, something else. And then like, there was a truck or something or something like that. Like, I don't know, a bunch of different stories came out, but like, what, what, yeah. What, what, what really happened? What really happened? Oh, geez. Um, well, basically there was this one night, 
Um, well, it, it's a lot. It's actually a really long story. I'm trying to like trying to think of ways to like cut it down a bit. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it, it it was it was in a nutshell. It was my fault. Like Heike, like I I was I was that guy to that should have known better. You know, being being what 19, I, I should have known better. Um, and obviously, like her 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 parents were you know obviously. Thinking about it now, they probably shouldn't have said the things they said to a, you know, a kid of my age, considering they were above 30 years old. But like, you know, water under the bridge, you know, they, they literally almost killed me. But it's fine. It's fine. Um, I, it, it, it was a dark time in my life where I, I didn't know what else to do because I, I, was, I was very unhappy in the Philippines. I wasn't home. I was far from my dad, who's my best friend. I was far from my mom. We're not even close anymore, really. Um, it, it was, it was, it was a time where I needed my friends to just, you know, just sounds cliche, but I needed my friends to hold me and tell me it'd be all right. It was, it was that kind of level, you know. At 19, being in the Philippines, which is a country where I'm not familiar with, even though I'd been here for like three years, right? Like, you know, we, we met like three years before I moved, so like it, it was, it was a dark time in my life, and like that she. Who will rename nameless? Uh, who remain nameless? Um, yeah, she, she gave me joy in the, the slightest of ways, which put a smile on my face, which is why I can't blame anyone else but myself for, for putting myself in that situation. But yeah, um, it got to a point where the family were just slating me, just calling me every day, telling me how much of a low life and degenerate I was, using words that shouldn't be used against a kid that's almost 20 years younger than you. Um, and I, I didn't have anyone to talk to about it. I, I, I really didn't. I didn't have my, because my dad. So you could say like at that time busy. you really just had her, which is the reason why you got blindsided. Yeah, she, yeah, she really was. So I was just writing and writing and writing. And um, at one point I was just like, because like while I'm writing, like it's just silence. It's just silence and the, the sound of the engine yep. in my head. Yep, and then that feeling, it's just that rush that you get from it. Yeah, and like, yeah, it was one of those times where like, why don't I just, why don't I just stop? Freaking end it right here. Why don't, yeah. why don't I just, why, why do I, why do I have to feel like this? Why do I have to feel like this? Like, what, what you know, like, it, it was like, at that moment in time, I was so ungrateful for my life. I was so ungrateful for the opportunities that have been blessed to me that I just, I wanted to get rid of it. For, you know, it, it, I was in that low point in life and um yeah i just i overtook the car that i was behind and i just went as fast as i could until i hit something and i did hit something and um luckily enough it just my leg that took the, the brute force but yeah i mean it was, it was a dark it was a really dark time in my life and i've never really I, i've never really told anyone like the real meaning behind it because like who, who the hell would listen right nobody like cares like with the tabloids and showbiz are like, oh, nak ano, na discrasha, kana like, kana naman talaga lagi, you know, like kapag na discrasha ka, ano, kapag nak ano ka, like, ay, lasinggero to, lasinggero kana, pero nobody really cares about the reason, you know, like they would automatically just assume that uh, it's the alcohol, he's a he'll, he'll, yeah. he'll never get anywhere in life, he, you know, he's fallen into the trap, which is true, I did, but. There's always a reason to everything, which is what I, I really dislike about this industry and, and the people in the Philippines that are too quick to judge. No, nah, that's just, that? like, for know, me, like, I think that's really just the mentality of showbiz, which isn't right in any way. It's just the people, I don't know, in, in the industry, everyone's just quick to judge because that's what a lot of people are paid to do. Just judge you off of who you are because that's, especially press, um, the way press is yeah. able to twist things down. Now, I'm not targeting any press because, I mean, at the same time, they help build careers. They've helped build me as, a, their job, as an artist. It's, it's, their, their it's their job. It's their job. They're just doing what they can. And honestly, I, it, it's just a weird mentality of everyone that in the industry, they're just, because they're an artista, they have to be this perfect human being. Um, yeah. Pag artista ka, yeah. kailangan... Yeah. Wala ka talagang nararamdaman iba. Ya, dapat sumunod ka sa mga sinasabi ng tao. 
hindi pwede na may ano may fault ka sa pag ano sa pagkatao mo hindi pwede da, kailangan perfect you tao. you are an artist for a reason dapat perfecto ka ganun yung mentality ng mga tao <laughs> yun yung problema dun <laughs> alright so going back to that though well what could you say is advice of like I said how advice. to ba- about bounce back because bro that's crazy that's pretty much uh, I don't want to put a label on it but it's it's pretty much committing suicide it it is at that point but like what I, w- I was committed I was committed to ending it that, that, that night I was committed to not waking up the next morning and I was disappointed when I did wake up the next morning mm-hmm. it was it was that dark in my life and, and any any like advice is Jesus Christ just um appreciate what you have it doesn't matter how hard I I, I mean like I, as much as any advice is about depression right it, it could all sound cliche but unless you're going through it or you can hear it there's nothing more precious than the life that you're living right now like depression will come in waves and like i i can't i can't say like get over it or like you know what everybody else said to me like yo it's nothing you know you just just exactly. stop thinking about it like that's what everybody says stop thinking about it but it's not like that you can't just it's stop not. thinking about it depression is another shadow it's always with you it's in the back of your mind you can't just stop thinking about it and we know that and to anybody else that is dealing with depression right now just know that there are people out there that love you that would need you right and that's what i didn't understand i thought that i could just give it up because there was no one else for me there was nothing else for me in this life but that i was wrong i had so much more to live for and you do too it's it's that simple like there's no there's no way to sugarcoat it if you if you're thinking about ending your life don't because there are people that rely on you there are people that love you people that need you i am so grateful for the mistakes that i've made i'm so grateful for the second chance that i've been given and it's just it's that's all i got to say i'm not going to sugarcoat it not... can you can you say that your second chance helped you realize how how you should be grateful for everyone around you and help you realize that there's people that need you because a lot of people yeah, of that are going through depression they don't they they're they're told like you look there's someone that loves you there's someone that's always there for you but they what what can help them realize that it's hard to realize that there's actually people around you that love you at times because there's a lot of people that go through depression where these people like they don't feel it because that's just how yeah they feel that's that, that's how they are and that's how they grow up how do you how did you realize and how did you start feeling that there was people that loved you was it because of your second chance or was there something that you realized well because of the second chance i actually got to talk with a lot of people because like people like when i woke up and like the following week after i woke up and after my operation um a lot of my you know my best friends and my family came through and they were asking me like what what happened like was it just honestly a, a drunk mistake and uh, you know and i you know some of the close friends that i i opened up to i i told them everything and and um they laughed at me like <laughs> they laughed at me like are you do you have a, like a low IQ or something like you know that i'm always here for you right yeah but that's something you say to your friends you know and I, but no but i really am like I am here right now like I I have work right now but I'm here next to you in your freaking hospital bed cuz I I care about you and you're still alive by the grace of God you know it's it's things like that like people that don't feel the love that they deserve it's because in my case I'm I'm an introvert I don't I don't like talking to people that I'm not too comfortable with and that's like most of my family so if if you're not feeling the love just literally it's so it's it's another cliche just talk to them open up look for that's it that's so cliche You're but saying, like yeah i guess look for it is another way yeah yeah because like the depression depression like it 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 grows in people that don't that don't want it to be solved with themselves like they 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 want they want sunshine to just glow down on them that's not how it works yeah yeah, gets, yeah. like if if you if if you're feeling like it's it's all over you want it to be to end there are people there for you all the time it's just about being open the more you release the more relaxed you feel and the more help you will receive and that's that's all that matters man yeah. open your mind open your mouth talk to them open your heart 
don't be shy don't be afraid don't be embarrassed about how you feel because depression is a real thing it's a sickness it it, it it clouds your mind it clouds your judgment it clouds your your soul it, 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 <laughs> man it eats you alive it eats you alive man like thinking about it now I'm getting emotional because like Christ I didn't think that we'd be talking about this so I hate you Kyle <laughs> you know, Here we are, bro. Welcome, <laughs> dude. I didn't even think it would get this deep either. I was just like, oh shoot. I kind of, it kind of segues to my next question, which is, what, what, what's your biggest regret? But be, I mean, hearing from what you said, honestly, parang parang nararamdaman ko yun. Di mo na regret yung bike mo. Kasi to be honest, that's that was a really good turn in your life at the same time. It was a really good realization for yourself. I mean, of course you regret it because you can't walk, you can't run. Obviously, that's the worst part about it. And of course, it was committing. It was committing to no tomorrow. But I feel like that was a really good realization for you at the same time. And it was also God's way of telling you that there's another way in life. Everything happens for a reason. That yeah, I live by that rule. Everything happens for a reason. Um, like, I, like, dude, a cow could poop on my face, and I'd be like, "Must have been the grass he ate." You know? <laughs> what? How did it get there? <laughs> like, and like, like everything happens for a reason, you know? Like, like the fact that I got to that point. Like, I like I like to think that I put myself in those situations, but I wouldn't be in that situation without the guidance of you know, whatever's guiding me. Like people make decisions and people like to blame things on a higher power. I don't like to blame anything on a higher power. Mm-hmm. I put myself in those decisions, but everything happens for a reason, right? So I put myself. I felt the same way. I felt that way. I chose. I chose to get on my bike that night. I chose to not talk to people about my 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 my, my feelings and everything. That was my choice. Mm-hmm. That was my choice. If I chose differently, different story. I'd probably be running around the block right now. It's it's. I believe that everything happens for a reason, and I don't like blaming things on a higher power. So there's no there's no point in blaming things on anything else than yourself, because you make the choices. You live your life. You make your own luck. If a door closes, another one will open, but by your choice. That's how it is. That's how it is. If he wills it, it will happen. You know. I'm not saying that God willed me to almost die. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's I put like myself in that you look decision. at it. Yeah, you, you look at it this way: how God put you in this position so that you realize what you should appreciate in life. Kind of like that. It's good, man. Damn, I didn't think we would get this deep. All right, I think. Okay. Um. Uh, too much deep. Too too much deep talk. No, that was a bit too deep. Okay. Too deep. Okay. Um. Can we talk about, I don't know if we're allowed to, but I want to talk about your video with Mrs. Jones. Oh, Mrs. Jones, yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Jones, yeah. Ooh. I honestly am so, I don't know if, I, I don't remember if I've told you this, man, but I am so happy. Just ecstatic that you were able to post that, that you finally posted that, that you finally showed yeah. the world and now it has a million views and everyone's just like damn <laughs> honestly all your friends weren't expecting it man but we were so happy so happy for you guys what 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 made you come to a conclusion that it's time it's time to show the world because for some reason we were getting like a huge surge of bashing on twitter and instagram hey yo kyle remember watching the latest Marriage Story film on, on on Netflix, right? With with Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. You win. I don't think I watched it. You don't watch it? Okay. How about the Avengers, right? You watched that, right? <laughs> I watched the Avengers, yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Okay. Basically, any other film in Hollywood where <laughs> I know where this is are, going. <laughs> you know, I know where this is going. To, act, to love one another, right? It's not like it's not like it's not like I watched Friends from 35 years ago and I'm like, oh, I hope Jennifer Aniston ended up with David Schwimmer. <laughs> like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't tweet horrible racist tweets at Jennifer Aniston's husband or her kid. I don't do that, right? Because that's not humane. 
right? <laughs> let's, let's just talk about that for a second. Because like, as, as, as much as as much as work as much as work goes, like, dude, I love Josh. Josh is a great guy. He's a brilliant actor. I've always been a fan of him ever since like him and Julia, right? Mm-hmm. And him and Janela have this insane chemistry on screen, and I understand that. I appreciate that. I'd love to see them on screen because, hey, guess what? I'm not a two-year-old. I don't. I'm not like. Oh my god, this is my girlfriend. Oh no, no, no. No, dude, because like they're <laughs> professionals. They're brilliant actors and actresses. They're working, and you know, and like, <laughs> I understand that people feel a certain way when they see that. I understand that, right? But like, you know, it's 2020. That like they feel like Team Real R E E L should be Team Real Team R E A L, which is I get which is the point. But like what the Philippine public has to understand, like that actors are human too. Yeah, that yeah, and like that just leads us back to they, that every single time. Exactly, like it, it's their choice. If they want to take the love team to a next level, that's their choice. They're they're never doing things to please the fans. That should always be uh, the base, like, you know, it's never to please you guys. It's for you guys, yes, but to every request that you have, like, oh, sayang eh, mas bagay kayo, sayang eh, si ano, gano, gano, hindi bagay siyo, pangit eh, kano, hindi bagay siyo. No, like, for real, like, yeah, that's why me and Janelle will never work together. I've said mm-hmm. this in interviews before, we will never work together because I feel like we don't look good together on screen. But she's the love of my life, and I will never lose her to a fan's choice. I'm sorry to <laughs> say that. I will that, that's the thing. I, I'll never read a tweet and be like, "Oh damn, yo, uh, Josh Nellis six nine two told me that I have a really ugly forehead, so I don't think we should date anymore." <laughs> like that, <laughs> you know, I, that's never gonna be part of my thought process. But you know, I'm not slating it. Obviously, everybody has the you know the, the they're entitled to their own opinion, and that's great. Mm-hmm. And I'm all for voicing it on social media. That's the that's the beauty of social media. You can talk about it. You can like debate people online. But saying things that are to hurt or intend to ruin somebody's day, that shouldn't be like normalized. Like bashing shouldn't be normalized. Obviously, it's it's normal, and everybody's like. And you know what's annoying? What's annoying about like social media? Like even like um, like my management and like people that I talk to, like, dapat masanay ka na ganon talaga. Ang sa akin hindi dapat ganon. Sa lahat ng mga manonood ng video na to sa YouTube hindi dapat ganon. I mean like, I just think it's just like okay, if because honestly most of my bachelors are like what 30, 35 to 40 years old. Hey, do you have kids? Do you have a family? Would you like that? Would you like the things that you're saying to people to be said to your daughter or to your son? Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. And like the fact that the Philippines is such a Catholic, God-fearing country, how can you say things like that online? And yeah, it's so contradicting. It's so contradicting. Like not, like obviously that's I, that's just my opinion. You know, like obviously, as I said, it's okay to voice your opinions, but just think about what you're saying because it it we're like you and me when we read things online. Right, like that. How long artista We don't feel things. No, we read things and we will feel a certain way. Like we we can be like, yeah, you know, whatever. But like deep down, like you know, what you say will have an effect in what 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 way whatsoever. Like it's 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 kind of sad that people react that way to certain things in life. But I mean, we can't change that. The yeah, bakayan ganun talaga. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, man. I mean, as artistas, I guess we have to become prone to that kind of stuff. It, it, it hurts, but at the end of the day, we are in the eye of the public. So we can't really do as much. We have to adjust as much as we can. But it's just at the same time, we know, not as artistas, but as humans, that some things are below the belt and just not right. Some things like you can't control. Dapat okay. So isipin mo to. Idol mo yung artista mo, yung artista na to. That does not mean that just because you're giving your 100% support, which we love, we appreciate every single bit of support that you guys give us because it helps us live and it helps us with our living. That's how we live, off of your guys' support. But at the same time, you can't control that artista's life and tell 
that person to do whatever you want them to do because you're supporting them. Um, like, see, Jaya, see, Janela, she's one of the most beautiful, amazing human beings I've ever met. Nicest person I met. But she gets this bashing because she's in a love team with Josh. But even before that love team, she was with Marcus and she loves Marcus and she wants to stay in that love with Marcus because it's her option. It's her opinion and it's her it's what she wants to do with her life. And you guys can't feel entitled that you guys can change whatever that person wants, because it, at the end of the day, we're also human. Oh, wait, wait. Also, something I got to say real quick, because I've, I've been saying this a lot on Twitter. Um, um, People like, like ever since we came out as a couple, like mm-hmm. you know, been a year and a half coming. But there's a lot of tweets <laughs> saying that um, that the, the, like now now that we've come out, all the things that Josh used to say and do with Killer Bride which is cringy and is like gross and stuff. But you guys got to understand, they were in a tele show together. They had to sell that to the top of their ability. Like there's there's nothing cringy about that. There's a reason why I didn't say anything about it because I understood it. Like, the, like they're a love team, right? Mm-hmm. Which is why it took a year and eight months for us to come out with this relationship, because they were a love team, and this it's a marketing thing, right? I wanted them to succeed and to prosper together, because I'm not uh, 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 ten years old. I, to succeed. <laughs> I didn't even know what you were gonna say. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. it, it's that simple. It's it's that simple. Like, get get. To go to my comment section, I'm like, I'm not split, 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 I'm I will never change my mind about it. I will never call Josh like selfish or like gross or cringy because he was doing his job. He was doing his job. He was being, he was doing his job. He's promoting the love theme. He was pro- promoting the show, which I think he did perfectly. The whole, the whole issue with the, the party and him touching him, I heard, sorry, perfect. Got you guys talking, right? Got you guys talking about the show. Bang. <laughs> Bang. Now what? Now what? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. This comment section is gonna be fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a comment. But section. legit, like regardless, guys, guys. Okay, if you support an actor, alright, and he gets into a love team and he has like, you know a, a life. <laughs> support that too. If you're a fan of his acting, you're a fan of his work, support it. If you really do. But if you don't, then if you're just a fan of the love team, if you want to see him together in real life, then just don't. Because let's be honest. Let's just real talk for a second. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna spark up this comment section real hard, real quick. What you do with your life is your choice. Okay? What I do with my life is my choice. What Kyle does with his life is his choice. And... Yes, we're in an we're in an industry where we're in the public eye, and we, we aim to to make you guys love us, make you guys support us, right? And we do the best we can, but at the end of the day, we're human, right? I it's been said a lot of times, but it, it's 2020 and it's been 35 years. I doubt that any it's not getting to any of you guys' heads. Um, um, but yeah, ang daming parang ang daming komento na parang sayang, sayang kung kung si Josh at Janela sayang ang ganda na sana ni yung career nila career 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 pro career lang. The first thing that I I I kept on reading was like I I chose love life over career. Over career, I forgot that was a choice. So it's it's just so I can't focus on both. Exactly. Works work, honey. Wait, but can can we tap into that thing that you said earlier, man? Because like me, just ako iniisip ko palang ang parang hirap eh para sa akin. Um, so matagal na kayo ni Janela, di ba? You guys have been together for a long time. Um, I know this. I, I don't know why I'm asking. Um, uh, <laughs> was it? You said earlier it wasn't hard, but how did you get over that? Seeing that they had to be sweet on cam and stuff like that. Isn't it hard All right. for you? Uh, well, I don't know I mean, if you could say it's like hard, like, oh, it's so hard to take. I can't take it. But obviously, I know you're a different kind of man. You know who you are. You know who you are in Janela's life. But it's just, 
watching it doesn't it feel like god i don't know if i like this or not like do i do something or something like that i can't say that it was hard i remember talking to you about this that day kasi tinitext kita eh kasi ako nakita ko rin yung sinabi mo kanina ng yung killer bride party kasi nagulat din ako eh kasi tinanong kita kung kayo pa rin kasi ako na nagugulo naguguluhan ng ako nun. I was just like, whoa, because everyone even made everyone made it bigger than it really was. So, um, I asked you about this, and I really admire your maturity towards this relationship way better than the last one that I knew about. <laughs> like one ah. hundred. This is like sobrang ibang Marcus to. Because if you compare it to the younger Marcus. Younger Marcus would have done this so much more different. He would have done this so much more different. And I'm really proud of how mature you took it. I say I saw how proud you were in Janela and how you were even though like as a man it hurts to see your girlfriend having to work like that with another man, but you were so proud of her and where her career was going that you never took it to heart and you never got in the way of their work because you knew that that was for her future and you were there for her for her future which i really like applaud you for damn yeah i mean with that night yeah i mean like people obviously like saw what was happening and they were like are they are they even together like why would she let this happen and like i was obviously like okay <laughs> hold on <laughs> what's <laughs> happening here what's happening what's happening at the table <laughs> no, everything was explained. Every, everything was explained to me, and you know, I, I trust. I trust the love of my life. She's not gonna lie to me. So, um, I mean, like everything's done for the show. Everything's done for the career. Everything's done for the work, and I'm, I'm in full support of it. There's, there's no other way to get pissed off. Damn. But yeah, honestly, still, I still like. Umaanga pa rin ako sa yo. Whenever I look at it, man. <laughs> whenever I see that. Whenever I go back to that, it's just like, damn, that is so hard. Um. All right. It's just, it's- Damn, this was this was a good one. But um, any, I'm gonna have a last question, and that question is: Is there any question that I should ask you, but I don't know enough to ask? You know what I mean? Is there any question that the, you yeah. should ask me? Yeah, like but something I that don't know enough to ask. Yeah, or like I'm gonna ask this to every single person I interview because I kind of really. Like that question because there's sometimes my mga ibang artista kasi na there's there's things being said about that person and they but they were never asked personally about it and they never really could clear themselves or say anything about that question uh, anything about it so anything you want me to ask you absolutely anything like, what shit, did you have for like, breakfast put me on the spot here. um maybe I can ask this question. Um, what do you think, like out of ever, all of the reasons, what do you think has kept you with Janela for so long? Okay. Um, what is what has kept me with Janela for over a year and eight months? I uh, I'm 22 years old, man, and I, I I've never been in love the way I am. It's I, I've never felt the the love that she makes me feel like. I, I'm gonna sound like freaking Jake Gyllenhaal in a movie scene, but like, there is no one or nothing that could make me look at another woman the way I look at her right now. Like, it, it's not it's not even fair. It's, it, it's not even it's not even fair to my family how much I'm in love with this woman because I, I would put her above anything else like I, I don't even know man it's it's hard to explain it's, it's hard to explain when you feel this way and to to the vague question of why I'm still with her is because I, I couldn't live without her at all that's Aww. that's as simple as, <laughs> that's as simple as it is <laughs> she's gonna watch this and cry her <laughs> out <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right shit. man damn all right that's it that's that's the end of the interview that's the end of the podcast podcast interview i don't know what to call it yet yeah. but that was it um man any last words before we end the show 
Okay, no, legit. Final words. Um, sa lahat ng ano, manonood nito, at sa lahat ng mga tagahanga ako, sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta sa akin hanggang ngayon, maraming maraming salamat dahil kung wala kayo, wala ako. I know that's very cliche, but seriously, especially in this time of hardship, um, you guys and the love that you guys give and support that you show is just insane. Not just me, but everybody else that you support. It, it, we all appreciate it so much. And in this dark time, I hope that everything will be better for the world, you know? I have to say, though. Final words are love all of you. Peace out. What's that? Oh, that's a whoa. <laughs> we deuces. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this very wow. That was, that was phenomenal. That was a really good interview. All right, peace, y'all. Love you guys and goodbye.